Mr. J. August Richards. Welcome to our fair city. I was waiting for you to freestyle rap. <laughs> I don't freestyle. No, that was for you, Amber. You framed Wayne. Uh, I'm a one trick pony. I just did the MC thing, so it's all right. <laughs> Amber was a part time rapper. Yeah. I've lost my voice, so I apologize for sounding like Kathy Turner on a bender. <laughs> I wish I was the one on a bender. <laughs> Sadly, when you're, when you're sick, you can't drink. Antibiotics don't go well. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully the weather will work, will work in your favor and you'll feel better before you leave Atlanta. So. <laughs> well, here's how we do these panels. For those of you who've never been on our Q&A here, uh, we have two mics in the audience. I have two lovely Wheaton, uh, Wheaton staff members with mics. If you would, just line up behind them. Stay in a kneeling position until you get to answer your questions so the people behind you can do it. And we'll just toss questions back and forth. All right, so we, let's line those mics up and get some questions up here. How's Dragon Hunt treating you guys so far? Great. It's been a while since we've seen you both here. This is my first time. Me oh, too. Uh, nice. Yeah. Convergence. Yeah, we're Dragon Convergence. You popped our cherries. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, you gotta watch out for this guy. Yeah. This guy's dangerous. No, but Dragon Hunt has been really amazing. I'm very happy to be here. I'm having a really good time. I've been meeting a lot of wonderful people. Um, some, some old friends and some new friends and some people I want to be friends with. So. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is from Mr. Richards. Um, I, I saw in your biography on the Dragon Con page that you actually grew up in Bladensburg, Maryland. Is that right? I did, yes. Yeah, I actually grew up very near there in a town called Colmar Manor. I've been to Bladensburg yes! many times. So, oh my God. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if you have any interesting or funny memories to share from growing up so near DC or, you know, in the Maryland ghetto, effectively. <laughs> right, man. It's such a, wow, that's such a blast from the past in a lot of ways. Because whenever people ask me where I'm from, I always say Washington, DC. But the truth is, I'm from Bladensburg, Maryland, which is a very small town um, in, outside of a very big city. Um, man, Bladensburg, growing up in Bladensburg was interesting, and I'm so sorry that I always take things so to such a deep level. I apologize. That's just kind of how I think, and just. But I, I'm gonna just answer the question. My family is from Panama, which is in Central America, and. They moved to Bladensburg, and there was one black family that moved into the town before we did, and they had crosses burned on their lawn. So when the realtors told my parents what happened before we moved in, my parents didn't know what it meant, and they thought it was a welcoming sign, so they were like, oh, let's move here. <laughs> so we were the first black family to live in the neighborhood, and I think by that time, you know, my father is just the most gregarious man ever, and, and you know, I feel very blessed to get that from him, I think, because my father has this gift of, he can make friends anywhere, and I feel like I have the same gift, and he gave it to me. So he single-handedly, I think, turned the whole neighborhood around, and everything was lovely and beautiful. So Bladensburg was a, is a major part of my development because, uh, you know, I just feel like it set the tone for who I would become as an adult, meaning I very much consider myself uh, sort of like a, just a lover of people and of all people. So I think that's how Bladensburg shaped me. Janice Richards, lover. <laughs> I always gotta take everything so to such an esoteric level. No, it's good. That way they get to know you. It's like a real person. You're not just somebody you see on TV. You're like Jay from Bladensburg, Maryland. <laughs> I was gonna say Baltimore, but you're not from Baltimore. <laughs> I have another question over here. <laughs> Hi, this question is for Amber. I apologize for making you talk so much. No, yeah, go for it. I was actually wondering what your thoughts were on your experience voicing Tara's character for the, the Buffy Chaos Bleeds video game where you sort of got to play the evil vampire sort of dirty-minded version of Tara, which was such a foil from her character on the television <laughs> show. <laughs> then also, you know, do you go by Jay? Is that, is that yes, like yes. Okay. I go by Jay. Mr. Jay, I don't know. Mr. Um, Jay. Miss Jay. <laughs> and if, if you could, if you could voice a character, whether it be yourself, isn't there a Miss Jay and a Mr. Jay? Yes. Yeah. 
Mr. J. Mr. J, okay. <laughs> if you could voice anybody in a game or a TV show, yourself or somebody else, who would it be and why? You go first. God damn it. <laughs> He's a gentleman, shoot. Um, <clears throat> no, it was, it was really fun to, to voice Tara for the Chaos Beats video game. I'm friends with Chris Golden and Tom Sankowski who <clears throat> Excuse me. Who uh, who wrote the video game, and I think they did a really beautiful job with it. I'm a really sucky video game player. I played Halo once, and I ended up in a corner five seconds after starting the game, and I couldn't leave it. <laughs> it's like my character won't leave the corner of the mountain. I don't know. Literally, everyone laughed at me as they continued on, and I stood in the corner. Um, so my ability to play Chaos Bleeds is not... So I've had to watch other people play it, but I think it's beautifully done, and I had such a good time. I'm a naughty girl. I have a naughty mind. I go right to the dirty, sick, twisted. Um, yeah. I'm like a 12-year-old boy trapped in a 35-year-old woman's body. Um, <clears throat> so to get to do like the raunchy stuff was really, really fun for me. Um, I am an old school video game player, like I... Of course you are. I used to, exactly. So, I mean, the last, you know, me and my brother were playing We Connect with my, our nieces and nephews, and he turned to me and said, remember when this was just a stick and a button? <laughs> Those were the days. So, if I were going to voice any uh, character in a video game, I would want to voice the captain in the little ship in Space Invaders. Because I feel like I know that guy. I am that guy. These damn asteroids are everywhere! It's the best game ever. I used to love this game called Circus Charlie 2. Uh, not the sequel, because there was a sequel with Circus Charlie. I like this game called Paperboy. Yeah. Remember that skateboard? Oh, uh, Paperboy, right? What about that game, too, where you were a skateboarder? You were a skateboarder and you were skateboarding 720 the degrees. Oh, 720 die. degrees and skater die. Those are two skate games. The first one. 720 degrees. That one. Yeah. And you did the 720 yep. degree when you did and the... You, and you did stuff that would make your body fall apart. Yes. <laughs> that was the best game. So. The worst thing about the game is I actually went out and tried it all. <laughs> <laughs> that was not wise. I made it. <laughs> but I'm not versed with the new games. I don't know the new games. Did you play? I would play... no... I mean, I did. I played Atari. <laughs> I used to like Frogger at the, at the pizza place. I liked it when the lady frog got on top of you. That was fun. <laughs> I was like, what are they doing? Oh. <laughs> she was so white and pure. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he crossed the road. <laughs> Let's take another question. Amber, how was your acting workshop? Was it successful? Would you do it again? And if you want to, you can answer in mine. <laughs> I wish I spoke American Sign Language because I would totally. Um, <clears throat> uh, it was really fun. I did a, a two-day intensive uh, acting workshop for Dragon Con this year. We, we did it uh, Thursday and Friday. It was from 9 in the morning until 5 in the evening or at late afternoon, or the break for lunch. Um, and it was so much fun. There were 12 people in the class, which was the perfect size, because anymore and I would have been overwhelmed. But I, I had such awesome, awesome, awesome uh, students. And uh, we did improv games, and we did a mock audition. I got to be the casting director, that was really fun. <laughs> Usually I'm on the other side of it. So uh, to be the one that just ignores you when you come in and reads like this, um, no. But uh, it was it was fantastic, and I would love to do it again. I'm hoping that we'll be able to uh, to start a more intensive acting kind of track workshop track for Dragon Con. It'd be nice if we could do like a basic one and more advanced. And so I'm trying to talk. I was like, Hey, Juliet, Juliet Landau, come and come and teach acting classes. Yeah. With me. So I'm trying. I'm trying to make it make, make it more of it. Um, Bill Fawcett's fault. Bill Fawcett made me do it, and I'm so glad he did. I had such a good time. So thank you for uh, for asking me about it. This is for either of you. Um, which episode did you like filming the best? I love the musical. Woo!
It was really fun. I was like, can we do every episode as a musical episode? And they were like, no. But uh, <clears throat> it was funny though because usually it would take, it was like eight days for you guys too to shoot an episode. So it took us like eight days. And uh, <clears throat> with the musical, we shot our eight days, but there was so much more to do that like, for the next like two episodes, we were going and doing pickups. So every time they'd be like, yeah, you gotta go do a pickup, I'd walk in my trailer and there'd be the corset. And they'd be like, no, no, please God, anything but the corset. They did so tight. Um, I looked good, but it was really tight. But uh, yeah, it was, it was such an amazing experience. I loved it. I'm so proud of that episode. I have many, but one that comes to mind is, uh, it was called Waiting in the Wings, and it was a ballet episode. And I, I loved doing that episode mostly because Joss was directing and we were all in every scene together and it was so much fun. I've never had so much fun at work before because when he's there we like play board games, we play boggle and fun things and you know, it's just it's, the camaraderie is amazing and it was just, it was just love. It was so much fun. We had such a good time and that was the first time I got to wear like a tuxedo as gun and that was fun. Different costume for him all together. So, yeah, that was a really a, amazing episode. We all got to meet Summer. That was her first time working with Joss. And, uh, so it was fun. That was a great episode. Okay, another question from over here. Hi, uh, I'm nervous. Thank you so much for being here. This question is for Jay. Uh, I have a few Buffy and Angel action figures. Yes. And I was wondering why I could find one for Kennedy, but not for Gunn. Who's Kennedy? <laughs> Exactly. We'll leave that one alone. Exactly. She's one of the uh, potential slayers in the end of season seven. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Oh. She becomes, she becomes uh, uh, I don't know, I can't say it across Amber, but she becomes uh, Will's love interest. Oh, oh. oh. She's, she's, she's so sweet. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, she is. She's a great, she's a great, uh, she comes to con, she's a great person. If I had her action figure right now, I'd melt it. <laughs> That's what I would do. I posed for one. I, I posed for an action figure, which, uh, did you pose for yours? You, when you, you wear this body stocking, I guess, and you're in Wait, front no. of this. You didn't Wait. 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 Wait a minute. Well, it wasn't one of the producer's house. <laughs> Come to think of it, there was no camera. Or Is it a sheer body stocking? They didn't make you say, give it to me, give it to me. I just have my head scanned. Well, I did too. <laughs> no. I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> no, okay, no. But they uh, made me put on this body stocking and it was this big truck. This is sounding weirder and weirder the more I think about it. I remember, I remember the truck. Okay, there was a truck, right? But no body stocking. Okay. Okay, really, no body stocking. Okay, so I'm in this body stocking and there's this camera that's running around me like it's uh it's like that thing in the airport when they're checking to see if you you know that thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I won't do that. I won't do that. I opt out. I get patted down. I get felt up every time I go to the airport. It's very exciting for me. And for the person, I'm sure. No, she always looks, they always look very unsettled. They're like, I gotta touch your breasts between the eyes. I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, it's okay. <laughs> Somebody gave me a keychain that says, um, I, I stop for the TSA. You know, like, I break for the TSA or whatever. Yeah, that's me. I break for TSA. <laughs> the last time Amber and I did one of these together, she bought me a t-shirt that said, Dead girls are easy. Because <laughs> they are. And this time she gave me another wonderful gift. I get gifts every time I see her. She bought me a tube of Baraka. <laughs> They're all like... Oh, the Baraka. What is it? No, no, no. <laughs> like Barack Obama. <laughs> no, it's an Australian. Um, it's sort of like I would say it's similar to. Emergency. I'm gonna get back to this question. Yeah, it's like emergency, but it comes in a big tube, and everyone in Australia swears by it. So I bought like six things of it. It's amazing. It's B E R O C C A, and I don't know if you can get it here or not, but I bought a ton of it. But my tongue's red because of it. And your tongue's Mine. Yeah. So she generously gave me a whole tube. 
Let's answer your question. I posed for it, and then we got canceled shortly after. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not, but that might have something to do with it. So. You need an action figure. I do, yeah. yeah. And then we got to do start need... that, please. Well, can we start that, like that whole like process? Let's get him an Let's action figure. Let's start that, yeah, yeah. We need a gun action figure. I think it's not fair. Yeah, because if Invisible Obama has 36,000 <laughs> Twitter followers, then gun action figures should be able to happen. Yeah. So, you know who Invisible Obama is? Yeah. Clint Eastwood was at oh, the RNC. Oh, that's in the chair, chair, yeah. So that person, the Invisible Obama, has 36,000 Twitter followers. Wow. Yeah. Is it verified? Because <laughs> if it's not the real Invisible Obama, I don't want to follow him. <laughs> that was insane. That's, that's so funny. I like the real Obama. Right. Yeah. Oh, the real Obama, yes. Wonder Woman. Yes. Um, Amber, um, first of all, I completely sympathize with you on Halo. I would just walk around in circles until they hit me in the back of the head with a gun. They didn't even have to shoot me. But um, I was a real big fan of your movies that you did, Chance and um, Lovers, Lovers, Liars, and, and Lunatics. lunatics. Um, I was wondering if you're planning on any future film prospects where you sort of write and direct and control the whole process. Yeah, I brought, I brought Chance and Lovers here, so if you come to the Walk of Fame, you can meet my mom and she'll sell you a DVD. <laughs> She's very lovely. She likes, she likes to chat, so watch out. She'll find out everything about you. She's the great interrogator. Um, no, I actually, um, <clears throat> in fact, we were just talking about this on the ride over. Uh, I cast, um, we have a mutual friend, Tanji, who, uh, um, Tanji Miller, who um, is in a film that I did called Drones. It's on Netflix streaming and on Showtime. Uh, I didn't write it. These guys, Ben Acker and Ben Blacker, who do this thing called the Thrilling Adventure Hour in Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like you. Um, and they wrote it, and then Adam Bush and I uh, co-directed it, and Tangie's in it, and Angela Bettis, and um, Jonathan Woodward, who you might or might know from, uh, from Buffy Angel and Firefly. I think he did it all. Um, he's amazing in it. He truly channels a young Bill Murray. Uh, Sam Levine from Freaks and Geeks. James Urbaniak, Dr. Venture. Um, <clears throat> and it's a lovely film. It's an office comedy with aliens. And I'm very, very proud of it. We premiered at the Slam Dance Film Festival and got picked up by a distributor. So I'd like to do more stuff in that vein. That was from the, kind of the last thing. It's like having a child. It takes three or four years from conception to like getting it out to the world. So it sucks up a lot of your time. So that's sort of in process right now of working on some other stuff. Working on a web series called Girl on Girl. There's no nudity. But, 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 well, we did have a topless girl. The, one, of the, one of the episodes is these two girls, um, I won't give away, but one of the girls was topless, they were topless, and we had modesty things for them to wear, and uh, Megan, one of our stars, decided that she was just gonna take her top off. So she was running around with no top on. So there is nudity, but you don't see it. I saw it, because I, was, I, was, I had one of the cameras, and I was like, these no boobies. <laughs> We, and we Frank Port, you know who John DiMaggio is? Yeah! Futurama Bender? Yeah, it's amazing, amazing guy. And he got to see the boobies, he was in it. <laughs> and also, um, with your music, I really like the stuff you did, particularly with Anthony. Uh, oh, Anthony Music Fellow Leaders, yeah. Um, and I was wondering if you were planning on any other music or any collaborations with either Anthony Head or um, James Marsters. Oh, James. Um, <clears throat> You know, I don't play music. I don't like play an instrument. So I don't write stuff. So right now, I'm just mostly singing in my shower. I was thinking about starting a club, just my shower. <laughs> People could just come and hear me in my shower. That sounds really, it's wrong, 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 wrong. I'm in there. <laughs> just have another question for you. Hi there. Um, my question is for both of you, but I first want to say my uh, I'm from Maryland, so <coughs> my husband is a firefighter in Prince George's County. Wow. Um, but I just wanted to know what are your favorite TV shows, both ever and currently? Ever and current? Probably The Wire. Oh my god, that was my answer! <laughs> that was my answer. Sorry. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my god. God, this show's so good. Who's your favorite so character good. on The Wire? Oh, God. 
they're all so good. I don't know. I love. I, I got a soft spot for McNulty. I don't know. <laughs> he's great. I know he's such a little shit, but Omar's the shit. Omar's amazing. Yeah, Omar's the shit. Omar's amazing, but McNulty's cute. I don't know. <laughs> Um, and okay, so that was ever? That's like probably ever. The, that was my uh, ever too. Yeah. And then Louis. Yeah. That's Woo! my current. Okay. I'm Louis C.K. on the inside. Woo! <laughs> Can I ask one question about Louis though? Yeah. Doesn't it seem like all of the women on the show are very... Neurotic? <laughs> like, yeah, like psychotically neurotic. <laughs> you don't spend much time with women, do you? <laughs> That's not true. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I would say they're, they're all psychotically neurotic. I think it's kind of his perception of women exactly. and the situation that, that he gets himself into. Right. Like with Pamela Adlon, who's the girl that he's, the woman he's in love with, kind of, who doesn't want anything to do with him like that. She's supposed to be friends. Like, I think it's his choice of women, like what he chooses. But I enjoy his women. I love the, the, the women that play his sisters. Like, I really yeah. enjoy them. They're so crazy. Women and play women? his sisters. Uh, uh. But my favorite women on the show are his daughters. I just, Woo! I feel like his relationship with his girls, it's so real. I mean, I've had situations like that with my dad. Like, we're in the car. When are we gonna get there? I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. And my dad's just like, you're 35 years old. How can you be bored in the car? <laughs> Gets her iPhone out. <laughs> well, my favorite show ever is probably The Wire as well. Also, Three's Company. <laughs> I love Three's Company. Three's Company is the reason I live in Los Angeles to this day. Really? I swear. I mean... But I want to hear this. Can I you... was so young when I first watched Three's Company and I just watched the show and I was just like, I don't know where that is, but that's where I need to be. <laughs> it just looked so fun. Like, they looked like they were so having so much fun. It was just so different from everyone I knew. Like, they were happy and fun, you know? I wanted to go to the Regal Beagle, have a drink. I even liked the Fur Mr. Furley, the Rovers. Uh... Even though they were hanging the butt, they looked like they'd be fun to hang out with. Such a great show. And currently, I'd say I'm really liking the newsroom. Woo! Really liking that a lot. Um, believe it or not, I really like Pearls on HBO. I haven't seen it yet. I, really like the show. I don't have a TV. No? So I have to Hulu everything. Nice. Or Netflix Hulu -hoop. it. Hulu Hoop and nice. Netflix. Yeah, I don't have a TV, I don't have cable. No, it's good. I was watching way too much Forensic Files. It was getting weird. Watching what? Way too much Forensic Files in 48 hours, where they show the real dead bodies, but they put a black line over the eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Amber's bad. You know what show I watch like that that's kind of changing my personality is Ancient Aliens. Oh. Anybody watch that? I'm really starting to believe that stuff. I really am. Y'all don't think the aliens have been here? Who built the pyramids? <laughs> the aliens. This is so much fun. I'm so glad you and I are doing this together. Yeah. This is like yeah. one of the best panels ever. <laughs> yes. So much fun. Yeah. You guys too, though. That's right, because me too. I love that show. Come on, knock on our door. Come on, knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> Where the kisses are hers and hers and his. And his three comedy too. <laughs> That just happened. Yeah, that just happened. That, that was my question. I just had to do it, you know? And you just reminded me of my favorite show ever. I just remembered. My favorite show ever actually is The Comeback with Lisa Kudrow. <laughs> sorry. Nice. Okay, that and The Wire. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, talk all day. Okay. It's cool. <laughs> but I got a question for you. Yes. Um, your character went through a lot of changes from your first appearance. How, um, how'd you feel about when you first came on the show, you, your character was like, man, I'm a thug, you know, I'm protecting, I'm, I got territory, and then, you know, then kill Fred. Did you say, and then kill Fred? Yeah. Man. <laughs> well, you know, the character for me started off with a bang, like in the very first episode, like, when I read the script, because I didn't read, I didn't get the script until I got the part, and when I read the script, I remember thinking, man, this is going to be the best episode I ever do as this character. Because I had to go through so much, I had to kill my own sister. 
And I was like, man, it's all downhill from here. But I was shocked that I was able to, I mean, I got challenged like that several times a year on that show where I'd get scripts and feel like, like that scary feeling where you're like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm, wow, they're really asking me to do this right now? Like, I don't know if I can really do this. So I was totally wrong. It was not the best episode I was ever gonna get because I got so many great episodes. And I remember talking to a lot of other friends of mine who were on shows at the time and them saying to me, you know, I've never gotten the A storyline. And I was like, I've gotten the A storyline a couple of times. They're like, really? And they're like, yeah, you're just a supporting character. I was like, yeah. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I really had to show up and, you know, as I was saying yesterday, I had to learn how to juggle. I had to do <laughs> love scenes. I had to be a romantic lead. I had to be a, the comic foil. I had to be um, so many different things. I had to fight, you know, I had to be a tough guy, which I'm not. And, you know, I had to be so many things. Um, so it was a constant challenge. And then when all the Fred stuff was going on, I was being challenged once again, doing that scene where I had to act with myself was one of the coolest kind of breakthrough moments I've had as an actor because Joss was directing that episode. And when I was playing the evil gun, or the non-gun, I guess it wasn't really evil gun, the non-gun, Joss kept giving me all these notes. like, And he was going for something very specific and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I'd do the scene like I thought it was supposed to be done playing the non-gun, and he'd be like, ah, just like a pinch more Lawrence Fishburne. And I was like, ah. Do I do it and do it? And he goes, ah, like a preacher in church. Ah, <laughs> then the other thing, what was the other note? He gave me another note and I don't remember what, what happened. And then, then I remember doing the scene and I got so frustrated in the middle of it that something just came to the surface. And afterwards, Joss, was, I've never seen Joss so excited about me or my work. I mean, he jumped up from behind the monitor and he was like, what did I say to you to make you do that? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so it was a it was a great journey. I hope I answered your question. So, okay. and, and you got to do Shakespeare. Yes, yes, got to do lots of Shakespeare on the weekends. And there was so much Shakespeare influence. There like was. Waiting in the Wings was really a Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah. You know, was that the episode? Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, it, very much. Because on the weekends, Joss would have everybody over. And uh, we would read Shakespeare plays out loud. This guy was amazing. Seriously, you were so good. I'm trying to be like you. Oh, but <laughs> trying to keep up with seriously. Keep, keep it up, up with the Ambers. Yes. <laughs> keep it up with There's the so many of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was always fun. That, that was, was. Those were really fun weekends. And that's kind of how we know each other. So, like, you know, we've never actually no. worked together. Mm -hmm. But we know each other from outside, from these from, as well. From outside, as, from the outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> from off the sound stages. But you know, doing the Shakespeare readings and these events. So that's the cool thing is we get to be friends. It's like a little family. It is very much. All of the Wheaton shows, everybody kinda knows everybody, or if they if they don't, they know of them and then eventually you'll meet them at a convention. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I met Sean from Firefly, first time ever today. Very Aww. lovely guy. Came over, he's like, we have a friend in common. I'm like, we probably have a few, but yeah. yes, he's like Amy Acker. I'm like, yes. <laughs> we do have a friend in common. <laughs> Let's get another question started over here. Hi. Um, Thank you. Jay, I'm actually from Maryland too, so we need oh to start God. a club or something. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, it's like a Maryland yeah, meetup later. Happens. Yeah. Um, this never happens, but I guess it's because we're on the East Coast, maybe. I guess so. Maybe. My question's for Amber. I was wondering if you would talk more or talk at all about your experiences on Tabletop and Husbands. Oh, um, <clears throat> so uh, so I did an episode of Felicia's, um, Felicia Will Wheaton show, Tabletop, that's, that was weird. <laughs> Aww, just thing fell on the floor. <laughs> um, yeah, no, 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 no. no. One for all and all for one. <laughs> um, no, I did an episode of, of Tabletop, which is, um, it's tabletop games, card games, and, and uh, we did, and <clears throat> we did uh, Gloom, and it was, it was so much fun. I had such a good time. I'd never played it before, and it's, it's just a storytelling game. Um, and it was really fun to sit next to Will, and he's, you know, giving you pointers and making sure you didn't make a total. 
ass of yourself because <laughs> I'm not a gamer. But I, but I really, I, I enjoyed board games as a kid, so I think it's sort of the same kind of conceit. You know, it's just strategy and, and, and not uh, blowing your wad on the first uh, play, right? Um, <clears throat> but it was, it was a really good experience, and there was a threesome involved. So you gotta watch it now. Um, it's on Geek and Sundry and YouTube. Go watch it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, little girl and girl action. And, uh, and then uh, I did an episode of Husbands for, for Jane Espenson and, uh, <clears throat> and that, I don't know why I'm holding this, like where's it gonna go? <laughs> um, and that, that was really, really fun. Um, Jeff and Jane and Cheeks and Sean, it's just, it's and, and, and it, just a great group over there at Husbands and I feel like they're really doing something special. I've always had a, a, a place in my heart for for anything that sort of furthers the idea that, that being LGBT is just normal and part of just being a normal human being and we need to, to, to not have it be something that, that is an issue. Gay marriage should not be an issue, it should just be. Um, so to be a part of Husbands, which is about the, this couple, this this sort of like in the limelight couple, a baseball player and, and, a, and, a, um, and sort of like a celebrity cabaret um, personality cheeks. Um, <clears throat> and they got married and it's sort of like the fallout from this. And I just thought it was just such a beautiful idea because it's not about them being married, it's about two people who are in a relationship and they maybe don't know each other that well. It was just sort of like a, a spur of the moment thing and now they're getting to know each other. And I just thought it was so beautiful and so well done and Jeff who's directing them and is one of the executive producers is just an amazing guy and he's just done such a beautiful job making it just accessible and real. He and Jane just, uh, I just, I'm so proud of it. And I have a little thing and I'm sort of a meanie in it. Um, but uh, I'm just super proud. I just think it's a great, great thing. You should all go check it out. Husbands online. I think it's welovehusbands.com. Yeah, love Lovehusbands. Love I we, uh, we Jane, love. Jane actually sat right there about three hours ago, and we watched it on the screen with, uh, yeah. with Cheech and Sean. So, Cheech and Sean. So, yeah, awesome. she's, she, she's a breath of fresh air. Yeah, lovehusbands.com. Question Hello. over here. Oh, hi. Um, I'm actually also a DC area local. Oh my god. No way. Yes. Uh, it's I like a convention. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a convention. Right. Is there like a Maryland meetup after? <laughs> Let's have a Maryland meetup. Um, so I was actually curious for, for Jay, when you're back home in the DC area, where's your favorite place to go in your day <laughs> thing to do in DC? Gosh. That's so, oh, that's, it's so interesting because so much has changed, you know, from when I grew up there. Um, when I lived there, I used to love to go to Greenbelt Mall. I used to go there constantly, I'm sorry, that's so inside, but yeah, Greenbelt Mall. There's so many, like, cheesy malls. What? I live, like, a mile from Greenbelt Mall. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, you know, the world today is so different than the world then because maybe it's not, but when I was a kid at like nine years old, I was riding the, nine, maybe not nine, it might be an exaggeration, 11 or 12, I was riding the bus from my house to Greenbelt Mall to go watch movies like every day during the summer, I would do that, and I'd just go see movies daily, I'd see everything, because I always loved movies from, you know, from very early, so that's what I, you know, I really love there, I, every time I go back, I want to go to the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, I want to go to that new harbor that's, uh, I don't know the name of it, the Gaylord National Harbor? And is there something called the Gaylord Hotel or something? There, yes. So that um, that area, I still haven't got a chance to check that out. Uh, it, I, that's what I hear, that's what I hear. Man, there's so many people from, so many hometown folks up in here. But I love it there, it's so different, and then DC itself is so cleaned up now. When I lived there, it was so dangerous, but now it's so, you know, it's just so clean. What's that? Gentrified. Gentrified, exactly. So I barely recognize it. I'd like to almost go back and live there again, just to, you know, feel it out. I really love DC and Maryland area. We should get a show of hands for how many people. Yeah. How many people are from the DC, Maryland, Virginia area? Holy my nice. God. That's right. Jeez. We're in the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. I love it. Well, nice to meet you, homegirl. <laughs> So, so I um, I went to drink my drink and you started talking. I was listening, and so I went like, 
because I thought I was going to drink my drink and I went for the microphone instead. <laughs> Can't drink the microphone. <laughs> I was like, movies? What? <laughs> Is that, is that covered in the acting workshop? <laughs> what to do to a microphone? Yeah. How to play it off. <laughs> <laughs> Question over here. Jay, I followed you on Biddy. I told you I would. Um, nice, thank you. What's your name on there? <laughs> um, it's Morgan Ansley. Say it again. Morgan Ansley. I just got the, the notification. Okay. <laughs> so we're talking about Biddy. Do you guys know what Biddy is? Yeah. So a couple of nights ago, I'm sitting around with a bunch of friends and I said, I'm gonna make us a billion dollars. I just got a billion dollar idea. Twitter, but on video. You have 20 seconds to make your point. And we were all excited about it. We're coming up with all these ideas and then another friend heard us talking about it and he walks in and goes, it already exists, it's called video. <laughs> so I download the app, I'm messing around with it, I can't figure it out, and the next thing I know it's been recording us for like a little while now. So that was our first video. And in the middle of it I go, oh my God, it's recording. And guess what? It's counting down from 20. So, Vinny. So you guys should join Vinny. I'm, I'm spearheading Vinny right now. I'm all about Vinny. So, uh, V-I-D-D-Y. And I'm J. August Richards on Vinny. I'm J. August Richards across all platforms. If you want to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. Vinny, or what else is there? I'm on one more. Oh, Instagram. Whatever, it's J. August Richards on all of them. Follow your boy, we'll talk. We're, we're little, Twitter friends. We are Twitter friends. I think I'm a little too revealing on Facebook. I, I tend to reveal myself on Facebook, and on Twitter I tend to just interact, I think. Um, TMI. <laughs> so, yes. But I heard your song Wall Down and loved it, and was curious oh, if you were doing anything else with your music career. Well, um, I write music as a hobby. Um, so I, did a, I wrote a song called Wall Down, and that was the only song I've ever written that I've shared online. And um, so I write music as a hobby, um, just for fun. I don't want to be involved in the music industry at all, because I, I think the music industry is very evil. I don't, you know, I, I mean, the people in, I don't like people in the music industry. That's a terrible thing to say. Just Beyonce's dancers. Just Beyonce's dancers, that's it. <laughs> But I love, what was I talking about? Oh, music. So I love to write music. I love to write music, and so it's just a hobby. But I will be sharing more songs soon. There you go. I'll be sharing more songs soon. I haven't written in a while, because I've been expressing myself creatively in another medium right now. Um, so, but I'll be writing again soon. You should video the process of writing songs and... Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Actually. You video it, and then people get to watch the process, and then you'd release the, you know, the thing on YouTube as a video or like as a song on iTunes or something. So you know what's cool about my song that I did share? It's interesting because the song is about a breakup that I had, and right after the breakup, I ran home and the melody was playing in my head. So I scribbled the lyrics down on a piece of paper, and I was playing it. And, I was just writing the lyrics down and scratching them out, scratching them out. Then I recorded the song. Then years later, I decided to make a video out of it. And I found the piece of paper that I wrote it on. Whoa. And I kind of used the paper as the visual. Oh, that's awesome. So I, I like that because it's such a raw, you know, creation of it. So check it out if you have a minute. Where, where can they find it? On YouTube. It's under my name, Wall Down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for being here. Um, Thank you for having us. <laughs> um, this question is for both of you. I just want to know if you could tell us your funniest blooper. Funniest blooper. <laughs> I'm going to go first. Okay, go ahead. No, you go first. No, if you, unless you I no, no, need the time. No, I, I know it, but you go first because I'm kind of okay. gassy. <laughs> to the water. <laughs> I'm just downing it. <laughs> I have several. I have several. Oh, those are super nice. Yeah, I might have one in a minute. I have several, and they're all on the DVDs. One of them is really funny because Amy and I were doing this scene together, and I had to cut her off. And uh, she, you know, it's the line, something like, we need to go get Angel because, and I was supposed to come in and say, because if we don't find him, we're going to die. So <laughs> take one, she goes, uh, we need to find Angel because 
if we don't, I don't know. Cause I'm not cutting her off. So she keeps talking, I'm just kind of looking at her. And then she starts laughing, I go, what? And she was like, you're supposed to cut me off. And I was like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Second take. We gotta find Angel because. And literally on camera, I look at her like. Like finish, it's your line. And literally we start, we're looking at each other like you. And she, no you, no you, no you. And then I go, what? And she goes, it's your line. And I go, oh. That's probably one of my, I have so many, but that one cracks me up because you can see in my face like I have this, you better get your line out, I'm not gonna say anything. If you didn't work on your lines last night, that's your problem. I'm not gonna rescue you, Miss Hacker. I can see her face too doing that, like innocent. No, like it's, it's you. She's such a sweetheart. And me just looking back, like it's it's so funny. I've never I've never gotten to spend a lot of time with her, and we actually spent some time together in Chicago, Chicago at this convention. And I felt so protective of her, I don't know why. She's a mom with two kids. And I'm just like, okay, watch out, we're walking here. No one touch her, never alone. I, just, I don't know, I felt very protective. She's just so vulnerable and innocent and sweet and has that face, you know. She's such a doll. Um, okay. uh, yeah, <laughs> you're like, eh. No. Um, no, uh, blooper, blooper. I guess probably the one that stands out to me is um, when we were doing the musical, there's a sequence where uh, Sarah's singing and, and Emma and I have to come and like dance back up. <laughs> and uh, there's Amber dancing back up poorly. Um, <laughs> and then I tell you, we have to turn around and like walk off. And I turn around and I walk off and I, right, I walk right into a pole. <laughs> and, I, and I like, I hit it and I, and I looked around and the camera guys, like they're awesome. And I was like, if, if someone had seen it, they would be making fun of me. So I was like, oh great, I got away with it. Nobody saw me walk into the pole. I'll be damned if I'm watching the musical episode. <laughs> There's Amber right into the pole. <laughs> yeah, so if you watch the musical, you can see me. And I, I do that, that Pee Wee Herman, like, you're not meant to do that, yeah. It's like, what, the, what are you doing here? Get out of my way, pole. <laughs> I was here first, bigger than you. The baraka gives you energy. This is the um, the Australian thing. She was yeah. It's not it's not invisible Barack Obama that gives me energy. <laughs> I get my energy from an invisible man. <laughs> People are like Empress a drug dealer. Do you have a question? I have a version of the question for both of you, um, Amber. Did you ever think about where Tara's character might have gone if she hadn't died in season six? And the version for Jay would be, do you ever think about what happened to Gunn after that final scene in Angel where they're charging the battle? <laughs> oh, I'll do it. You answered first last time. Okay, perfect. Damn it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, um, I think I think it's been it, for me it's been interesting to to see the comics for season eight because I feel like you know there've been sort of touches of like Tara and kind of what happened with her um, and and I I like that I like that you know she's still a part of the world even though she has passed on um, I felt like when she showed up she sort of was in the same world as as Tony had like she was sort of like a voice of reason. And I think maybe like had, had she gone on, she would have continued in that vein, sort of, sort of helping to keep everybody sort of on, on track and, and not lose sight of, of you know like what what an ethical moral way of dealing with things is. Um, so yeah, I think she would have been a voice of reason had she had she not died, and I think she would have continued on. Maybe maybe she would have uh, gone and become a watcher. Maybe down the road, you never know. That would have been freaking awesome. Why did I think of that like 13 years ago? So uh, I've had friends buy me the comic books over the years and I've never read them. And I think just psychologically, I want to just leave it as is in my mind for some reason. I don't know why, I guess because if I read it, I don't get to interpret it, I don't get to act it. So I have to just leave it alone. But I've heard that I was turned into a vampire. I really love that. Um, I would have loved to act that. 
Um, that would have been so much fun. But in my mind, even when I was when I was doing the character, I remember always thinking, if my character were turned into a vampire, he would kill himself. And so that was just kind of an image of something that I used to, to play the part. So. That's really interesting, actually. That's cool. Because that's how much he kind of hates. Yeah. If you will. He was such a tough dude. So <laughs> it was fun. I always enjoyed Angel. I felt like it was sort of the darker version of Buffy. Do you know what I mean? I felt like there was like a noir quality to Angel that I really enjoyed. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I'd like to say that Jay August, uh, I really love Gunn as a character. He kind of informed me a lot as I was growing up, uh, being a man uh, who can act an ideal and whatnot. So thank you very much oh, thank for you. that. Uh, But a more entertaining question. <laughs> <laughs> For both of you, I was curious, present company excluded, um, what was one character or actor from the other show that you would have loved to work with as a governor, Tara? Oh, gosh, that's good. I just want to get a Spike and Drew sandwich. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been fun? They were so awesome. I enjoyed their, that relationship so much. Just loved their, their Sid and Nancy quality. Oh. Tara would not have done well. She's a little too wussy for them, I'm afraid, but that would have been fun to hang out with them. So many. And so many characters came over to our show as well. Um, gosh, I... Well, I mean, I did scenes with... I mean... <laughs> I think you and Emma would have been really funny together. Wouldn't they have been an awesome duo? Yeah. Yeah. She's got that Carol Lombard, like, you know, screwball comedy kind of thing going on, and he's like Mr. Tough. Like, they probably would have totally hit it off. You know, I wish you weren't here, because I would have said you. Aww. Good and Tara sitting in a tree. <laughs> Sorry, she doesn't go for boys. I know, right? <laughs> But I think they would have had a good they time had, together. Yeah. Yes. They were so much fun. I love hanging out with Jay. He's just such like a nice person. On top of being super talented, he's just like genuinely nice. He's really hot too, right? Thank My mom you. was like, that Jay August Richards, he's sexy. <laughs> and I love your mom. I, and I love her even more now that I know she said that. That's awesome. She did. She came home last night. She's like, so sexy and he's so nice. We hung out last night. We both hung out yesterday during the day while you were teaching your class. Oh, I was teaching my class. You were making I out with my mom. I wanted to take your class. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to take your class actually. Next time you should teach a class. I know, but I'd rather take your class. Yeah. I just do improv games and anybody from my class here? Ah, there's yes. Leslie. Sorry. <clears throat> and Stella. Aww, we had such a good time, didn't we, guys? Then we had drinks last night. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. We, nice. we went to the Hyatt bar and had hot toddies. Nice. They didn't know how to make them, so I had to look it up online. <laughs> and show it to them. Whiskey, lemon, honey. It's for my voice. <laughs> yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs> but it was awesome. We had such a good time. We played so many improv games. and You're always invited to the class. Sweet. Seriously, if I do it next year, you should come and like, Speak. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You sound like a lot of fun. It was. Let's get a question from over here. This will be our last one for the day because we're running short on time. So, sorry. No, this was a fun hour. Went by fast. This for Amber. You were a great corpse on Ringer. <laughs> and I was. Oh, wow. Were they playing, planning on bringing you back if it didn't get canceled? <clears throat> and can yeah. you, oh. I'm sorry. Can you also talk about how you got? Uh, to be the, the corpse? Yes. Um, so, <clears throat> he played this, this character named Mary on Ringer, and uh, I had this really, really great scene with, with Nestor, um, who's on the show, and uh, I was a, a stripper. I kept saying prostitute, no, 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 stripper. It's very different, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strippers. Strip okay, yeah. I'm a stripper, not a prostitute. Jesus, yeah. Stripper, stripper. Amber's a stripper. I mean, Mary's a stripper. I mean, 
But um, but yeah, it was great because I, I hadn't really spent a lot of time with Sarah in the intervening years. I you'd see her here and there, but to get to come on the show and work with her again, I just I adore her. She's just good people, and I've always had a good relationship with her. And I walk into Ringer and I'm like, oh my God, she looks the same. How has she had a child? And all these years between that, and she looks the same. It's unsettling. Like, the woman does not age. She looks so good. And she and I are both book whores. Like, we love to read. So it's sort of our bonding. We're always like, talking books. Yeah. Yay, books. Um, yeah. And uh, so anyway, so I played the stripper on the show. And, and uh, <clears throat> have this, uh, this really nice scene with Nestor, and then I die. I get I, I get strangled with a belt, I guess. Um, so I had to like lay on the floor and be dead for a while. That was that was always interesting. I had a really really short skirt on. And I kept having to apologize to the crew because I was like, I'm totally flashing all of you. I'm so sorry. This skirt is very short, and I'm on the floor dead. Um, but Sarah and I were talking in the makeup trailer, and she was like, oh, when we go on and do the next, you know, we're going to have you come back, because it's all these flashbacks in Ringer. We're, she and I are going to do this scene together, and da 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 And then it didn't happen, because it didn't get picked up again, which was a bummer, because Ringer was really fun. I loved everybody on that. They were so nice. So much of the Buffy crew was working on Ringer. Sarah brought them all to, to work on the show. It was really awesome. A lot of transpo, and our camera guys, and I mean, it was really, really neat. I'm so excited, to, it's like old home week. <laughs> yeah, oh. Dead, dead hooker, prostitute, um, stripper. <laughs> dead damn. girls are easy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm super easy with that short skirt. <laughs> it all comes back to the t-shirt. It does go back to the shirt, later. all these years later. No, well, thanks, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut you off. No, it was for the best. <laughs> Well, on behalf of Dragon Con, I uh, just want to thank you both for being a guest here today. And for coming to thank you. We'd love to see you over our place, and we'll see you back again next year. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody. Amber Vincent and Jay August for a pleasure on the show of love. Hopefully, we'll see each other some more this weekend. <laughs>